What is up, Senders? I'm here in the absolutely gorgeous Jackson Hole, Wyoming. My wife and I have been on a two-week tour of Colorado, Utah, Idaho, and now Wyoming, and I've been aboard this custom Transition Sentinel. I wanna give you a bike check and a review. Let's check it out. So checking up, let's talk about how I built up this custom Sentinel. For starters, I built it up with a 2023 RockShox Lyric Ultimate. This is a fork that's actually been out for almost a year now. I really love the green color. I wanted to match it up with this lesser green color on the Sentinel. Perhaps another option would have been the newest RockShox Zeb. I've actually spent time on that fork. For me, the damper on that fork is just too harsh. Whereas, I don't know if it's just a little extra chassis flex on the Lyric, whatever it is, it just feels a little bit more supple to me. And cool enough, we've been in several different bike parks and I've never had a single moment where I've wished that I had a burlier fork. The performance on this Lyric has been flawless for me. It is plenty burly enough for any of the riding that I'm personally going to do, but it still is a little bit more supple and I just don't feel like I'm taking the beating that I took when I rode the newest version of the Zeb. I also chose to build it up with the 2023 RockShox Super Deluxe Ultimate Air. It does not have the adjustable bottom out resistance that the new Vivid Air has. I do wish it had that, but this one is actually much lighter weight. I wanted to keep the weight down on this build because I knew we were gonna be doing a lot of pedal miles. I've really not noticed any sort of fading out on longer downhills. I mean, it's still got the piggyback reservoir. The performance has been really good. I love having those extra clicks of high and low speed compression. And so I'm actually really happy with my choice on the Super Deluxe Ultimate Air. If you look at the rear of the bike, the Carbon Sentinel is still not UDH compatible, which means you cannot run SRAM transmission. The good news about that, unlike some of the YouTube reviewers who love the new transmission but hated the original Axis. I actually always loved the original Axis. I've had it on several bikes and so I put a GX Axis derailleur. I've got an X01 cassette. It's performed flawlessly. Do I prefer the new transmission? Yes, I love that extra shifting under load when you're really trying to get into the cranks and go faster or when you're going up steep hills, but Honestly, the original Axis does a pretty good job of that as well. It's actually really tough. The battery lasts forever, like no complaints. I actually have a set of reserve wheels. These are the Reserve SL Aluminum. If you follow the channel, you know I've ridden plenty of carbon wheels, but I actually built up these aluminum wheels custom by hand. I laced them up to a set of DT Swiss 240s. These things are actually ridiculously light for aluminum wheels. They're sliding in at under 1700 grams. And so they have really helped keep down the weight on this build. They have performed flawlessly. I've taken some big hits. I took one particularly big hit that I think I actually got on camera. That may have been a day runner. That was a straight sharp rock somehow, some way. These reserves, man. Yes, I deserve to have a flat from that. Could not be happier with these wheels. Do I think they're as compliant as their carbon counterparts? No, not really. But if you're looking for an aluminum wheel set that is actually very light and super tough, could not be more happy with these Reserve SL aluminums. I'm not even running inserts. For cranks, running my tried and true five dev trail cranks in a 160 length. Just gotten to where I like that for the increased clearance. I've got it paired up to their oval chain ring and a 30 tooth. So I've got a ridiculous climbing gear for when I need it. Very, very happy with that setup as usual. I've got a tried and true one up 210 dropper post. And if you'll notice, I've got the anomaly construct switch grade. That is a saddle tilt. Check out my review on that. It's perfect for tilting the saddle down for those long grind climbs. You can tilt it back for your descents or just have it level for riding around on the trail. I've got my always preferred one up carbon bars in the 35 rise. I've got that with a transition anvil 40 mil stem. And then probably most notably in the cockpit, I've got the Hope Tech E4 brakes. Those things have done absolutely fantastic. We've had literally like six and seven mile descents in some of these bike parts. They have great modulation. They have absolutely out of this world stopping power. They don't seem to fade out. And I still have brake pads and so no complaints on the Hope Tech E4s. I've been running my preferred Maxxis DHF 
and a max grip in the front in an XO casing and a dissector in an XO casing with a max tear compound. I questioned whether or not I should have an XO plus for the bike park. I had one flat and that was actually in the front. It was not even in the sidewall, but very pleased with my choice in tires, especially to be a lighter casing. Again, I'm coming in at under 160 pounds. I know some people think that they need a DH or a, a DD casing, but I've done fine with, with the XO. So now let's get into the review. My impressions of the Sentinel after spending two weeks, four bike parks, lots of crazy trail rides. I just wanna give you my overall impressions. Now, if you follow the channel, you'll know that previously I had built up a really nice new transition smuggler. That one was a size medium. Now I'm coming in just under 5'10", and I may have to walk back a little bit about what I've said previously. That size medium feels absolutely fantastic on 90% of the riding that I do in and around Kentucky. My local trails, it's super whippy, it's super playful, it is an absolute blast. But we had in the bike shop an aluminum version of this exact bike, and I had been thinking all along, I wonder what that would feel like for our out west trip. I took it out for one shred and knew immediately that that was the bike that I needed to take. It just felt noticeably more stable. It felt like it fit me like a glove. There were times on the medium smuggler that down in North Carolina, when I would get it in some super rough sections that I would sort of wonder in the back of my mind if a large wouldn't be more appropriate. And it's very noteworthy that the smuggler actually has longer reach per size than the Sentinel. So this bike in a medium would have a 450 reach, whereas the Smuggler is a 460 reach. So that medium Smuggler, it did fit me pretty well, but this one then slides in at a size large at a 475. And I've been very pleased with that decision for this trip. I, it's a small difference, but I do think it's noticeable and I do think it helps me to slot more comfortably into the large category on the Sentinel. And so that may be something worth considering. But on the whole, this has been the absolute perfect bike for this trip. Uh, we've had some relatively tame rides where the trails aren't that hardcore. We've also had some pretty rough riding in and around the bike parks and even on some of the cross country rides that we've done. Now the cool thing about pretty much every transition bike that I've personally ever handled, they just seem super lightweight for what they are. Even it being as burly of a build as this is, this thing is sliding in right at 30 pounds with pedal. And that is a very lightweight 150 travel bike. And that really plays out well on the trail because it has a very snappy pedaling platform. You don't feel like you're hefting just this huge massive bike around for when you're doing pedal days. But then when you get it in the bike park, it still has a nice slack burly feel to it and it really does feel as capable of a bike as you would expect from transition. Comparing this to the Spire, I actually had a medium Spire for a while, again, that 460 reach, and the fit of that felt pretty good, but that super slack head tube angle just I never really jived that well with it. This one's just a little bit more conservative on the head tube angle, but a little bit longer bike. And for me personally, I prefer that setup. The one thing that I'll say about the Sentinel compared to the newer generations of transition bikes, transition have been adding a little bit more progression in the rear end of the bikes as they've been coming out with newer models. If you take that newest smuggler, you pretty much never notice any bottoming out on that bike if you set it up correctly, or if you do, you've really had to work hard for it. And that's one thing I would say about the Sentinel is that you're not just like easily blowing through the travel. There's still some progression there. It's just not quite as progressive as the newer bikes in the lineup. Having this Super Deluxe Ultimate with the hydraulic bottom out seems to help that, but it actually has a nice supple feel if you set it up correctly. And as far as the pedaling platform, it seems like it has a really good amount of anti-squad. It really goes when you get in the cranks. And so all in all, I'm very pleased. I wish it did have just a little bit more progression. There have been some times where you seem like you blow through the, the travel just a little bit too easy. But one thing not always spoken about is the bottom bracket. These are pretty low slung bikes, but if you compare it to say maybe a Santa Cruz, not quite as low slung. So you're not worried about constantly pedal striking. Pair that with me running these 160 cranks and pedal striking has just pretty much not been an issue. I, I really like that these set up pretty well 
and also just thinking about the geometry on a transition bikes it doesn't seem like they're worried about having the shortest rear end and the slackest front end it's actually a very balanced feel which i prefer i love feeling very centered in the bike so it's got a little bit longer chain stays it's got a nice slack front end but it doesn't feel like you're just riding a chopper and it's so slack in the front it actually feels very balanced and very centered so i feel like i corner this bike very well the seat tube angle i don't get really wrapped up in memorizing seat tube angles but i do prefer having a relatively steep one that being said it can go too far and i feel like whatever it is on the sentinel really is the sweet spot it's nice and steep so that you're in a good seated pedaling position but you don't feel like you're just sitting on top of the bike like a clown on a little bike <laughs> And so again, my only real knocks are the lack of a UDH on the rear. It would be cool to be able to run the new transmission. And again, I wish it had just a little bit more progression in the rear kinematics of the bike. But when you consider how awesome this bike is and actually how progressive it is in its geometry, the whole package, and the fact that this actually has been out for, I think, three or so years, maybe even going on four. Transition absolutely knocked it out of the park with this bike. But even being a few years old, I think the Transition Sentinel is still an all out contender if you're looking for an all mountain bike, which is exactly what I was looking for for this trip. Something that could carry me into bike parks, but still go do big epic trail rides and not feel ridiculously cumbersome. The Sentinel for me, has hit that perfect balance point. As far as other bikes that I would compare it to, I do think the Santa Cruz Hightower would be a very formidable foe to this bike. It's got a glove box, it's UDH compatible. I do prefer on the Sentinel the accessibility to the rear shock. And me personally, just maybe it's perception, but I think that this one's just a little lighter weight feeling and just a little bit snappier in the pedaling than the Hightower. But the Hightower is also a very balanced bike. Definitely check out our ride videos from this trip. We've hit up Trestle Bike Park, Steamboat Springs. We hit up Sun Valley in Idaho, Deer Valley just outside of Park City, Utah. We're hitting up Jackson Hole today. If you haven't done so, please consider subscribing to the channel. As always, thanks for watching.